we, we were talking about the reactions of, of people to, in survival situations, particularly if they extend over a period of time. One of the things that was strange about this, and I checked a couple of other guys, and I found out that of the four people I asked up in Newfoundland, two of them remembered basically the same thing. The third one said she didn't know about it. He, she got married to him in Australia. He had been in the South Pacific. And one day she came in and he was lying on his bed crying. This is uh, maybe 20 years, 30 years later. And that was the first time she found out anything about the Pollocks. Well, when I showed Terry's tape for a yacht club thing, <clears throat> and I gave a, a talk on it at the New York Yacht Club, uh, when I was through and they were asking me questions, my daughter that you met was in the back of the room. And she said, that one of the things she thought was interesting, which I had, and I really had never known this until she mentioned it. She never knew anything about it until she was 18 years old, that I had never mentioned it. She knew that there was a shipwreck that I had been in, but I had never told her about it or anything else. And I found that a lot of the guys I went sailing with, you know, when you're sailing, you're telling sea stories all the time, and particularly Navy stories, never told them about it. And yet I never felt it was blocked out of my mind at all. Crazy, isn't it? No. I went back the first time. There was a 50th reunion. A year before the 50th reunion, maybe two years before, there was a Cruising Club of America cruise, <clears throat> which is an outfit I belong to to Newfoundland, the first cruise they'd ever made to Newfoundland. And I was with a friend of mine on, on a yawl, and uh, I had told him some of this. When we left St. Pierre and Miquelon, he said, well, let's sail by the south coast first and take a look at it. And I said, gee, that's a great idea. So we sailed to it, and I recognized where it was, and it was foggy, as it usually is on the south coast. But uh, he got very close to it, and we could see it clearly. We saw the rocks, and then he, he suggested that we sail into St. Lawrence, and, which we did. <coughs> and I said, well, let me, let me see if the Rose family still here because they were the ones that took me in and put me in the bed with hot rocks and all sorts of other stuff. And uh, I went alone because he said, you ought to do this by yourself. And there's a fish factory there, <clears throat> big building. And I went into the fish factory and went up to the second floor, which is where they told me to go. And here was a big room with about... Uh, maybe 15, 10 or 15 young ladies at typewriters and files and so forth, and the kind of a counter. And I stood there, and someone came over and asked if they could help me. And I said, yes, I was curious about Rose family and whether there was a Rose family that lived in St. Lawrence. And uh, they said, well, there's a Mrs. So-and-so Rose and so uh, which rose do you mean? And I said, well, I don't know what their first name was, but I was on a ship that was wrecked here, and uh, they took me in, and I'd loved... And there was, it was as if Moses had suddenly appeared. There was a deathly hush. Everybody looked over. Somebody said, were you on the Pollocks? And I said, yes. And it was like, because these were... A lot of them, I guess, between 18 and 25. And uh, it was as if somebody said, by God, Moses did exist. And they all came around, and I was surprised because who at 18 or 19 would hear this? 
And that's what I found out. The story was gone through every year that they held a ceremony in the church every year on this date, so forth and so on, and was kept alive. 